These are a couple of applications where you do not spot the chemicals in the first place, but there are some chemicals used in there in producing concrete into uh, tunnel production, into floorings in large uh, factory halls or into facades. And if you look at the next slide, then you see the working places where such products are applied. So the chemical products are often a very small part of the whole thing, of the whole construction there, and uh, handled in specific working places. If you look at these, they often have specific characteristics, for example, uh, that they are provided in fairly small packaging, like a cartridge only, or a pail, or a bag. They are often ready to use, so there is not much to do anymore uh, by the worker. They are basically packaged in a way that uh, conceals the chemical already. Sometimes there is additional mixing needed if there are several components or if you have to add water to such a product. These products also tend to uh, have a multitude of ingredients, individual substances. The work conditions we saw on the second slide, uh, they are often just a brief use during the daily uh, work schedule of the worker. He uses the chemical compound, but he's also doing a lot of other working steps. There are also some cases where he basically will do the same thing for the full shift, so that's very variable there. Uh, the work environments under which these products are used are often very frequently changing. It can be outside with different weather conditions, it can be inside, it can be small rooms, it can be large rooms. So it's very different from industrial uses where you usually have a specific setting that you can assess individually. So following from that, you also have limited risk management options and that's actually the main topic of the talk. So you can use gloves, of course. You can also use safety glasses. These are standards. Uh, people will most often have safety shoes for other reasons already and also for the chemical ones. Work clothing is also a standard, although you have different weather conditions if it's outside, so the requirements on working clothing may vary. Usually you have just natural ventilation. You do not have many technical means to, sh to improve the ventilation situation or install some exhaust, so it will be as it is. Also, Leo mentioned already top-down and bottom-up approach. So here as an example, top-down top approach basically is starting from the substance. You have a hazardous substance. Ask the question how to use this substance safely, what kind of risk management measures do I have to use? And one answer might be use a respirator and then that's communicated down the supply chain. The bottom-up approach starts at the other end, at the pictures we saw in the beginning. So there is a state-of-the-art product use. That's the conditions under which such products are usually applied and can be applied. And then the question is rather, is the ingredient that we want to use to produce such a product safe in such an application? And this has to be then uh, answered in a safety assessment. And an answer may be in that case, yes, it's safe if you do not exceed the concentration of 10%. And the formulators are usually designing such products specifically for this application, so they have the knowledge about what is required, how is it done, uh, what is needed. The operational conditions at those workplaces are kind of a given reality. You have some opportunities for uh, optimizations, but it's really very limited. So therefore, it makes a lot of sense to start with those conditions um, as they are given. If you standardize this set of conditions from the reality, you will have also an op uh, the possibility to consistently do risk assessments for the substances, because all the substances that are going in this application will use the same base information. And in the end, also, you will have the possibility to provide consistent safe use information down to the end users who finally apply this product. On the next slide, I'm also coming to this topic of OSH and REACH. OSH is a legislation, Occupational Safety and Health, is a national legislation in all European member states that's in place for a long time already. Uh, that is also known in industry how to apply. It refers to workers only. So it's about worker safety and it's about inhalation and the OELs that Mati explained 
before, so the limits for in inhalation of a hazardous chemical. And it's in the responsibility of the employer where the work is finally done. On the other hand, we have reached, the target is the same, to improve the safety of using chemical products in the workplace. It's not national anymore, it's European, so it's for all the EU member states the same uh, process. And it goes beyond worker safety. It also includes uh, safety of the environment and consumer assessments. It also extends beyond inhalation, so it also looks at dermal uh, risks and oral, specifically in the case of consumers. And the responsibility is also not in the first place with the employer of the workplace where it's used, but with the supplier of that substance or product that will be used there. Some challenges which we, which we still have there is users of such products are often very small enterprises. So the expertise for both, for each and for occupational safety issues is rather limited and it's often not very chemical. These uh, companies are not chemical companies anymore. They have their expertise in other fields like engineering or whatever. So their expectation is actually to receive a safe to use product under the conditions which they normally apply. And how to create that safely is actually more a task within the chemical supply chain. To do that all, it's very important that for the many substances that go into such products and finally in the whole field, uh, the information is consistent and comparable so that it can also be brought together on the product level. And of course, the information should be comprehensive for all the substances that you receive. If there are some missing, then you have an issue on getting it together. And of course, it should also be valid, so well thought out. Well, from all the slides you have seen before, I would take four statements as the main conclusions. So the REACH exposure scenarios contribute to product safety information, specifically because they are now available for all substances, all hazardous substances that are registered and they are following a specific scheme. So we have a typical information for a large set of substances. The workplace assessment on the other side is much more applicable to the individual workplace. It's more comprehensive and it comes up let's, in, in the end with a, with, a, with a more applicable conclusions. For complex products, as described before, the consistent information is a main element and that's one of the targets that uh, should be achieved via those use maps which then can be applied to all the substances that go into such a sector. The conditions under which the products will be used in the end are mostly predetermined and cannot be changed based on risk management measure information that you uh, that's coming down the supply chain from various sources in various formats and uh, with different requirements. So in the end, you can't rule the world from a one substance perspective. It's at the end much more complicated and you need to bring more information together. Mm -hmm.